What? Well, we gotta welcome back to the episode of Rolling Bob. We're here to do break down our Richmond race coming up. It's a preview. So, the Xfinity Series entry list 39 entries, 38 spots up for grabs. So, one car will go home. The normal ones here um, Taylor Gray in the number 19 truck. That's interesting. He's raced for Tricon Garage. Um, up and coming young talent. So, it'll be interesting to see what, what he can do in a Joe Gibbs racing car. So, that's exciting. Also, Eric Amarillo is back in the number 20. Corey Heim in the Sam Hunt Racing number 26. Mac to Benedetto. He's here he goes. We didn't know he was going to have a ride at all this year. He's he's official. He's got his ride. I don't know how he'll do. It's in the, you know, I think it's like a Ryan C car. It's the Viking Motorsports. I think they have like a little alliance with each other. So, we'll see how he does. The one I'm really interested in is Bubba Pollard. He is a late mile, really, really good late mile driver. He races in the Cars Tour. Uh, he's going to be racing the 88 Junior Motorsports car. This is exciting. You know, you got, this is finally what I think what Junior Motorsports is doing. They're getting these, uh, you know, young, talented, late mile drivers that really probably wouldn't get much of an opportunity down those lower series to come up to the Cup Series. A really a great chance. And, you know, I would say that the Sweet Series car is really close to the late mile car. It drives maybe the same way. So I think this is going to be a great opportunity for Bob Apollo. It's a short track. Hey, that's what the Cars Core Series is. He's going to go against. These top guys and really see how he can do. So we break this race down. Stages. Stage one is 75 laps. Stage two is 75 laps. Last stage, 100 laps. 250 laps total. That's racing at 145, which was, it's, I believe it's 130. The green flag at 145. Looking forward to this race. You know, I'm I'm excited to see, you know, how Bubba, Bubba Pollard does. Chandler Smith won this race last year in a calling car. Calling cars, they have time experience series, uh, you know, cars, equipment. Uh, I'm like saying, I, I, I see Chandler Smith. If we're going to go right to it, Chandler Smith's my pick. I believe he's going to be good. He's already proven to be good overall this season with the way he's run. He's very, he's run really, really good um, in this Joker's racing car. We're seeing his talent. You know, he definitely struggled in his Near the end of last season in the calling car. We didn't see much of him. Now and then he's in a really good car, which he is. And he's also a very talented driver. So I'm already going. I'm going with Chandler Smith to win this race. But we got to look at what the, the junior motorsports cars. Also, we have to look at the calling cars. Can they pick it up? Can Josh Williams pick it up? He needs it to pick it up here. We need to start seeing a little more. Something going on with Josh Williams. He's just had a terrible start of the season. Nothing. He's not having fun. He's probably not enjoying himself. Just had a newborn. Congrats to Williams. That's great stuff. Um, we'll see what AJ, AJ, AJ Almadier, gosh, if I could say his last name. We'll see how he does. He's good in the short tracks here. A lot of breaking use. He's good at breaking. He's good at road courses. And then with the Fords. We have a low supply of Fords like we've had in this week's series and truck series. Um, I need to see something from Haley Deegan. She's, I think she's 30 and something in points. It's not looking great for her. Right now, she's starting to struggle. Like, you know, this is where I'm saying with Haley Deegan. It's like, is it her or it's the car, man? I mean, she needs to pick it up. She's gotten rashing support. She's getting Ford support, man. Ford leaving her. There's not many Ford performance, you know, development drivers because she's under she's under contract as a Ford developmental driver. So she needs to pick it up. Ford expects her. Like, look, you may maybe you could say that you know. You can't expect much from an a racing car, but I think Ford expects something from her, right? This is, she says, Xfinity is much cleaner racing, which I believe, yes, it is. We've already seen that. But she's not, where, where is the top 15? Where is a top 10 yet? We need to see that. And again, it's her first year Xfinity series, but we're all, everyone's hyped her up that she's going to do a whole lot better Xfinity. We haven't seen that yet. Where is that? I'm waiting for it, man. Um, now, just to let you know, I'm a fan, so who the freaking... Who the fuck am I to say anything about a race car driver? I don't know crap, right? I mean, you can look at the Stuart Haas cars. Ryan Herbst, Cole Custer, they're going to be fast. They're, they're just, they're in the best stuff, man. So, you know, I, every week they're going to be a favorite because they're they're the top Ford guys. You always got to look out your top Ford guys. They're always going to be a favorite, in my opinion. Toyota, Joe Gibbs Racing. That's all you really got to say. They are the cream of the crop in, for the Xfinity Series. Joe Gibbs Racing, man. Eric Hammer-Royal, another opportunity. Veteran, experience. He's going to be good. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how Eric Hammer-Royal can do. You know, I haven't really been much impressed with Eric Hammer-Royal. 
I would expect a little bit more. I mean, he won a Xfinity Series race last year in a Ryan C car. A low, like a third car. Third tier car. I mean, we got, I want a little more from him. He's running well. He's running top 10, top 10, which I expect from him. But I want a little more. I want some more race pace. And I get it. There's so many cars in Joe Racing. I don't know how many drivers they have. So, you know, there's only so much resources they can give to each car. But I expect more from there. I'm Sean Cream's run pretty well so far this season. I see him. He's been running in top 10, top 15, uh, later half of the top 10, to be more exact. Um, so we'll see how he does. Uh, he's doing decent on short tracks. I guess we also I forgot about the Chevys, the RCI cars. Um, Jesse Love. Jesse Love's really, really good. He's good. Um, also, Austin Hale, SVG, too. Gosh, I'm forgetting about him. I'm always forgetting about drivers. I think SVG, it's, we'll see another, another new track for SVG. How does he learn? How does he adapt? How does he run? The weather is 10% chance of rain, 60. So it'll be hotter. Maybe a little more slick on the track. I expect the Xfinity Series race to be the best race of the week when it comes just to overall short track, good short track racing, tire wear, bumping, slide around, no shifting. Um, so I'm excited in this race. Now let's get to the Cup Series race on Easter Sunday. It's a 7 o'clock start, late night race. I think it's been a little while since we have, we have had a night race. This weekend's entered this really the only two guys. Ty Dillon is going to be making five starts for calling racing this year. Don't really expect much from him. He's out rat really roofing, racing. Guys, it took me forever to think about that. He's been decent there. You know, he's, you know, glimpsed the top 10, but he's not shocking the world in the truck series. So, you know, I'm a little worried with Ty Dillon. I uh, assume so he has some sponsors. I'm not sure we still have a deal, a sponsorship deal affair. So, we'll see there. Don't expect much. And then, you know, Cass Graw making another run there in the number 15. That's going to be one of his, another one of his 25 races. It'll be interesting to see when Cody Ware shows up. When they assign what race he'll, he'll run, it's most likely going to be a super speedway. It's just going to have to be it because it's the only track Cody Ware can really be relevant in. The race is at 7 o'clock. Green flag, 7 15. Easter Sunday, stages 70, stage 1, 160, stage 2, 170 to finish out in stage 3. This is a short track package. I think we're going to get a better feel for it. And this track, this is actually maybe more of a true short track. Lower banking, but it's 14 greens of banking. It, the short track package is a simplified diffuser. It's about a 2-inch spoiler. The old one was about 3 inches. Um... A little different tire, maybe a little. It's the, the tire they're using is the tire that I believe they used for Phoenix. The in race, you know, the uh, RK cars kind of dominate the later half. I believe it was the fall race, the cookout 400 race. And then I believe in the spring, it was kind of a Hendrick 1 2 finish, I believe, with Kyle Larson winning that. And then the year before that, we had Kevin Harvick and then Denny Hammond winning the first uh, our inaugural race in the next gen car for Richmond. I don't know how this race will go. You know, Kyle Busch is good here. He has five wins here. But the RCR short track package has not really been, he's been miserable in that car at short track. So, I don't know if we're going to hand it. Kyle Busch is going to have a car, car capable of competing up front. Also, Danny Hammond, he has four wins here. And I think the Hoyas are freaking prime. Prime to win, to dominate this freaking race. I mean, absolutely freaking dominate this race. I'm worried for the other field. I think the Toyotas are going to be so good. I think all RK, I mean, you know, like, the, the 2011 cars, they were fast here at, in the fall race to cook out 400. They were up there. Bubba Wallace was leading before the RK cars kind of took over. Tyrone Knight was up there too before the RK cars took over. So they're going to be fast. The whole Toyota package will be fast, I think. The Fords, man, they, they've struggled. You know, I thought the, the – the short tracks were going to be better again for them. That was their strong suit last year, even though when the mile halves were weak, when it came to their aerodynamics. So I don't know where we, how I see the Fords doing. Penske should be good. I mean, Ryan Valini was 
has, has been strong on the short tracks. Joey needs to pick it up here. He's I think he's twenty first in points. He's slowly action his way, but he's not getting he's definitely it's not what he expects, no. He expects to be up there in top sixteen, you know, gaining points, adding points, not trying to catch up and play catch up this now it's only the fifth I think it's the fifth or sixth race of the season. So he has plenty of freaking time. RK cars. They dominated his race last year. I think this is a great opportunity. We'll see. You know. King Chris Busher. King Brad. King Brad was maybe him and Busher were one and two. I think Busher's car was a little bit stronger in the second half of the, that race. Last the last race, Richmond race, Brad's car was really strong in the beginning and Busher's. I think they just Busher's car that can't matching the setups, kept improving. They're probably getting data from what Brad was doing. They were able to match those setups, and that's what I think what allowed Chris Bush to have a good enough car to compete with Brad and ended up passing him after Brad had maybe a, a slower pit stop. So I, I could see that. The Chevys, we can not we can never look down on the Hendrick cars. Chase Elliott. Um, I'm actually, I think Chase Elliott, and he did not race this race last year. He was injured. Judge Barry finished second. I might have said that Chase Elliott finished second. Josh Berry finished second. We can look out for... We got to forget... Holy frick, I'm forgetting people. The Stuart Haas cars, man. They are like the epitome of short track drivers. I mean, every all four of those guys are like raced in short tracks. Like hardcore short track drivers. I mean, we got to watch out for them, man. Especially Ryan Priest. I think he was running, running the, the modified race. I don't know where he finished in that race. Josh Berry, I mean, he is the epitome of short tracks. These guys are short track drivers. Noah Gregson... I mean, so look out for Stuart Haas. This could be a race where we could we could see you know Stuart Haas run top ten. We I would like to see a little bit of pickup from Noah. He's had two bad races: one at Bristol, one at Coda. Now I don't expect much from him at Coda anyway. I mean, the Stuart Haas guys were irrelevant at Coda. They're they're not men. They're not short track. They're not road course drivers. Gosh, you know I, I think it's going to be hard to pass. These cars are so have so much grip at these tracks. The horsepower is lower, right? The, the blah blah blah. The whole cliche stuff everyone says, which it, it's true. Uh, but who knows? We'll see. Nate, this package. Hopefully, the cars slide around more. Hopefully, have better tire wear. It'll be dark out, so the track will be cooler. So, it could be hard to get that that wear. Will be as slick. So that can be the only thing that hurts it. I'm gonna get, give a pick. I'm gonna go Toyota. I believe in Toyota. I'm gonna go Martin Truex Jr. He's won here before. I think he's won here twice. He's good here. I think it's his time. It's his time now. He's veteran. I think Ty Gibbs is right there, but I still think his race crap is lacking a little bit. You know, at times where he's leading, he just does a little, makes a mistake here or there. That hurts him a little bit. Doesn't give him, doesn't put him in a position to win. So I think Mark Trucks is veteran in this. He's won here before. He's good at short tracks. He's going to be in a freaking rocket ship. Mark Trucks gets it done Sunday night. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know. Like and subscribe. Hit the notification button so you don't miss. Stay tuned to my race breakdown on the Xfinity Series race. Also, stay tuned to my top five favorite paint schemes for this weekend's Toyota Owners 400. That'll be a short on my YouTube. Check that out. Besides that, thank you guys for watching again. Goodbye.